Good evening, good Shabbos, and welcome to our service. Let me say as we begin that it has been our custom to have a special service in commemoration for Veterans Day. Harold Bronson, one of our veterans of Iwo Jima fame, spoke earlier at our cocktail hour, and we are going to have some special music in the service relevant to Veterans Day. I also want to say something comparable to what I said last week, where we recorded the service before the election, and I said, therefore, I wasn't going to talk about the election. This is being recorded after the election, and one more time, I am not going to talk about the election. <laughs> <laughs> Let us begin with the singing of For the Beauty.
thanks, O God, for this Shabbat which unites us in faith and hope, for Shabbat holiness which inspires sacred living, for Shabbat memories glowing even in darkness, for Shabbat peace born of friendship and love, we offer thanks and blessing, O God. Page 28, we remain standing for the bar code.
parted shores of history, we still believe what we were taught before ever we stood at Sinai's foot, that wherever we go it is eternally Egypt, that there is a better place, a promised land, that the winding way to that promise passes through the wilderness, that there is no way to get from here to there except by joining hands, marching together.
who are holy praise you every day. Blessed are you, Adonai, the Holy God, Baruch Adonai, Ha'el HaKadosh. Please be seated. For those of you who are following in your books, I'm on page 55. Disturb us, Adonai, ruffle us from our complacency, make us dissatisfied. Dissatisfied with the peace of ignorance, its quietude which arises from a shunning of the horror, the defeat, the bitterness, and the poverty, physical and spiritual, of humans. Shock us, Adonai, deny to us the false Shabbat which gives us the delusions of satisfaction amid a world of war and hatred. Wake us, O God, and shake us from the sweet and sad poignancies rendered by half-forgotten melodies and rubric prayers of yesteryears. Make us know that the border of our sanctuary is not the border of living, and the walls of your temples are not shelters from the winds of truth, justice, and reality. Disturb us, O God, and vex us. Let not your Shabbat be a day of torpor and slumber, let it be a time to be stirred and spurred to action. Baruch HaTadonai, Mekadesh HaShabbat. We continue with Ritzei.
God of goodness, we give thanks for the gift of life, wonder beyond words, for the awareness of soul, our life within, for the world around us so filled with beauty, for the richness of the earth which day by day sustains us, for all these and more we offer thanks. Let us pray for peace, grant abundant peace to Israel, your people forever. For you are the sovereign God of all peace. May it be pleasing to you to bless your people Israel in every season and every moment with your peace. Baruch atadunai hamevorechet amo Yisrael v'shalom. We continue with some silent private prayer. Mm -hmm.
We think in particular of all those who are suffering from this horrendous pandemic. And we pray for those who are trying to help them, all their caregivers, on every level of care. And we mention the following members of the congregational family and our friends and family members who aren't doing well at this time. Arlene Steer, Nancy Freund, Ruth Pagurski, Andrew Lerman, Eileen Agan, Joshua Haran, Katie Pastor, Prudy Caruso, Zachary Pastor, Ralph Einstein, B. Einstein, Howard Baker, Marty Edelman, Suzanne Ryman. We also pause for a moment to give all of us an opportunity to mention names of others who are not on the list, who could use an extra prayer at this time. May the Blessed Holy One be filled with compassion for their health to be restored and their strength to be revived. May God swiftly send them a complete renewal of body and spirit. And let us all say amen as we sing together. Here he is, way over a hundred years old, 
If I've lived this long, I'm going to live forever, and so will she. He had done what all of us should do. In our Torah reading this week, we hear about the negotiations that he has to go through to acquire a burial spot for his wife. Now, I'm going off on another sort of tangent, but not quite. Not quite because I think I'm meeting some needs or some concerns that have come up in some of our classes. How did Abraham mourn the loss of his wife? We can't imagine what mourning practices were in those days, except to say quite different from what we would do today. If we had no sense of history whatsoever, and enough people imagine it was always the same, we would assume that a minion, proper quorum, would come to Abraham's house, and there would be religious services there, and Abraham would say Kaddish for his wife. Well, saying Kaddish for the deceased, as we all do, and is such an important part of our services, our practices today, isn't that old. A thousand years is not all that old in the Jewish tradition, if it's even that old. I mentioned Kaddish because we talked about it a bit in one of our classes. And as you will see in an upcoming bulletin article that I just wrote, I am going to be offering in December look at all our e-blasts, a special class on the Kaddish. Not the kind of class that we've done before, and not the kind of class that you're used to, where we talk about its meaning and its significance and its role in modern Jewish life, but something quite different. We're going to go through it word by word and translate. The Kaddish is almost, not completely, almost entirely in Aramaic, a language akin to Hebrew. I've mentioned this before, the first assignment I think we had in our Aramaic class at the Hebrew Union College was to translate the Kaddish into Hebrew. We're going to translate into English, word by word. Something we seldom do. We rattle off the words as if it's just by rote. What are we saying? We need to know the significance of what we are doing. We need to know the significance of burial practices and mourning practices. Abraham was caught off guard. This is my speculation right now. I could argue in the other direction too. Abraham was caught off guard. He didn't quite know what to do. He knew where to go and how to negotiate but he didn't know whether he'd be successful in finding a burial plot. He should have been prepared. And he also should have been prepared, and we're speculating again, I know, to know what would be the proper burial procedure. We try to teach our kids in Hebrew school as much as we possibly can, if nothing else, so they can have the right prayers mastered for a synagogue service. We don't teach them how to read the Kaddish. If we did, the backlash would be unbelievable. We don't want to expose our little kids to death. Phone calls would come to the rabbi or the education director, what are you doing wishing me dead? We can't do this. So then, when the time does come, we don't know what we are doing. I offer you an opportunity to sit down and study and learn together and figure out what these words mean. And I know we all need to be prepared, whether it's for a storm, whether it's for any kind of violence against us. Look, the world is not the safest place. And how to deal with issues in our own family. We also need to know how to rejoice. And tomorrow morning, Shabbat morning, I'm gonna talk about a wedding. The part of the Torah that we talk, talk about too much. A few chapters after Sarah's death, what on earth does Abraham do? 
this guy who must be at least 150 years old by now, he gets married again. But maybe you want to hear the details of this tomorrow morning. Let us continue our service now as we turn to page 283 and we rise for the adoration. Tushpachata benechamata, 
until we're very sure that everybody in the building is safe. Our rabbi, our staff, our choirs, our, all the people that come into this place need to be safe, and we need to be very cautious. So thank you very much, and a meaningful Shabbat. Please join me in the singing of the Kiddush. Please rise.
May the Eternal One bless us by protecting us and granting us the Sabbath of peace and happiness and good health and safety. Good Shabbos, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.